large language models may not need floating point precision or may not need GPUs in the future. That is the kind of claim in this interesting preprint or research paper from Microsoft Research. So this paper is titled as the era of one bit large language models. All large language models are in 1.58 bits. So what is the idea over here? The idea over here is that if you take any um, neural network, right, you do this weights into input multiplication, right? Because your weights are in floating point precision values like 0 0.2961 and so on, right? So what happens over here is that you do this multiplication and then addition, okay, in your computation. So most of the computations are multiplications and then additions. What if you can convert this weights into just three values. Okay, one, zero, and minus one, right? So this is a ternary representation, okay? If you do this, all your operations now become addition. It doesn't require multiplication, right? So probably you need new hardware for this kind of an operations, right? You can do it on your existing hardware also, but this can also give rise to new hardware. So what they are saying is that one bit large language models, this particular bitnet B1.58, they provide a Pareto solution to reduce inference cost, basically latent throughput and energy of LLMs while maintaining the model performance. Okay, so previously you had this 16 bit floating point weights and there were quantization techniques and other techniques to reduce it to four bit float, right? Uh, 5 bit, 3 bit, so on, 2 bit, so on, right? And with which you could get performance improvements. But what if the weight can be represented in say 1.58 bits, right? Now where does this 1.58 bits come from? Okay, so when you convert these weights into, you know, uh, ternary uh, values of minus, it could be minus 1, 0 or 1. So basically you have three states. So when you have these three states, when you want to encode it, you can have this, you know, uh, you want to store it in ternary, you have this formula which says log 2 of 3, which is 1.58 bits per symbol, okay? So that is where this 1.58 bit, you know, uh, came from in this particular paper, okay? So this is quite a crazy idea, I would say, but, you know, uh, before, uh, where did they get inspired for this, uh, you know, architecture? Okay, so there was this work called BitNet, which came in October of last year, okay, uh, which is another uh, research paper from uh, Microsoft Research, which talks about scaling one bit transformers for large language models. Okay, so here again, the idea is that uh, they are making use of something called as a bit linear, okay, uh, a bit linear uh, architecture. Okay, or a bit ne linear neural uh, network layer. So what they are doing is in your transformer architecture, right? You have this uh, computation of attention. So every linear layer is being replaced by something called as a bit linear layer. Okay. So in the feed forward network also, every linear layer is uh, replaced by something called a bit linear layer. Okay. And this is a particular computation flow of a uh, bit linear. Okay, so it's a network layer. And there is a particular way of, you know, instead of conventional matrix multiplication, this particular bit linear layer employs binarized one bit model weights. That is the idea over here. Okay, but the other components like activations are left at eight bits. Okay, so details are present over here of how they are binarizing the weights to a plus or minus one. So the change which they made in this particular paper is that they introduced another state zero over here in this architecture. Okay, now what are the benefits they could get over here? So vanilla LLMs or large language models are in 16 bit floating point values, the weights and the bulk of any LLM is matrix multiplication. So the major computation costs from floating point addition and multiplication operations. In contrast, the multiplication uh, matrix multiplication of bit at uh, this particular architecture only involves integer addition, 
which saves order of energy cost for LLMs. So over here uh, with this, you can get faster performance. Okay. So what they're saying is in addition to computation, you have this uh, transferring of model parameters from DRAM to your GPU chip. Okay, which also uh, you know increases costs, right? Uh, uh, than DRAM, right? So here, compared to full precision models, one-bit LLMs have much more uh, lower memory footprint from both a capacity and bandwidth standpoint. This can significantly reduce the cost and time of loading weights from DRAM, leading to faster and more efficient inference. So what they are saying is that this is the bitnet architecture. Okay, the benefits of bitnet architecture. So here they've introduced a variant called bitnet B1.58, where every parameter is ternary, taking on values of minus one, zero or one, one of these three values. So they have added an additional value zero to the original one bit bitnet resulting in 1.58 bits in the binary system. So this particular model offers all benefits of the original one bit bitnet, okay? Additionally, it has same energy consumption, also same to one bit bitnet, and it gives performance similar to your uh, 16 bit uh, precision LLMs. That is what they are saying over here. Okay, and because of introducing of this value zero, the modeling capability is stronger because you can do feature filtering because of the inclusion of value zero in the model weights. This can improve the performance of one bit LLMs. And their experiments show that this bitnet B1.58 can match full precision baselines, FP16, in terms of both perplexity and end-to-end -end task performance, starting from a 3 billion size when using the same configuration, model size, training tokens, etc. So what they're saying is that this bitnet B1.58 architecture with one bit LLM, basically, or 1.58 bit LLM, shows similar performance to your 16-bit floating point LLMs, okay, for the same parameters, right? So they took a LAMA LLM, which is 3 billion parameter, and they took this bitnet B1.58 3 billion parameter uh, model. And when they did a training of this bit B1.58 from scratch uh, and compared it versus LAMA on uh, this thing, they say that, uh, you know, the perplexity of this is lesser than that of uh, LAMA LLM and you get this memory and latency improvements. Okay, lower memory consumption and, uh, you know, lower latency as well. Okay, in terms of performance also, they are saying that the accuracy, zero shot accuracy of this particular model, in fact, beats LAMA LLM 3 billion over a certain set of benchmarks. That's what they are saying over here. Okay. Now you can take this with a grain of salt because you know yeah, if they are trained on uh, if there was leakage on benchmarks and other things there are a lot of other possibilities why these numbers could be high okay and the architecture of this particular b1.58 uh, this thing is very similar to llama like architecture that's what they say over here right and if you look at uh, the results over here what they are saying is that uh, you know uh, energy consumption of this particular model when compared to a LAMA LLM, okay? Most of LAMA LLM's operations are floating point 16 addition multiplication, whereas this just uh, uses uh, int 8 addition, right? So this is the kind of comparison. So it requires 71.4x lesser energy, right? Or this bigger model takes, you know, uh, compared to the one bit net, this takes this much higher amount of energy, right? On the right is end-to-end uh, -end energy cost across different model sizes, okay? So based on this, they come up with some nice uh, scaling loss which says a 13-bit Bnet 1.58 is more efficient in terms of latency, memory usage, and energy consumption than a 3 billion parameter floating point 16 LLM, okay? So if you look at uh, this particular graph, this is where they say from this, a 13-bit, uh, your uh, bitnet architecture B1.58 is more energy efficient than a 3 billion parameter your LAMA. Okay. Similarly, they say that a 30 billion parameter bitnet. So more the number of parameters, you have, uh, you know, more better uh, model generalization, more capacity in the model, right? For learning. Okay. So 30, bit, uh, 30 billion parameter bitnet B1.58 is more efficient in terms of latency, memory usage and energy consumption than a 7 billion parameter floating point uh, 16 LLM. 
okay similarly a 17 billion parameter bit net is more efficient than a 13 billion parameter floating point 16 llm okay so you can increase the capacity of your uh, one bit or 1.5 bit uh, transformer uh, this kind of a model uh, while also saving on latency memory usage and energy consumption when compared to you know your uh, normal floating point 16 large language models these are huge claims okay these are huge claims and unless this model is released out and it is integrated part of some framework and you really try it out right you have to just believe what is on paper i'll put it like that okay but these are huge claims and if you know the claims are true and um, this can really work out for all use cases and um, you know the model capacity is fine it can um, generalize very well then you have uh, to come up with newer architectures right to make better use of this kind of this thing maybe if floating point operations are not required maybe you don't need gpus because gpus were uh, optimized for floating point operations right you can still do good things on cpus so this is an interesting paper interesting direction and if you look at uh, the future work what they are saying is that uh, you know there is a memory consumption uh, what do you call a bottleneck for your uh, floating point llms because of uh, memory uh, for long sequences because there is a this kv cache computation the key value computation it scales in quadratic right so with this now uh, as the activation is reduced to 8 bits over here the context length can be uh, increased one of the major challenge for long sequence inference is the memory consumption introduced by kv caches but in this particular bitnet b1.5 the activations of this kv caches are reduced from 16 bit to 8 bits therefore context length can be doubled with the same resources okay and you can have llms on edge and mobile because these are these architectures are more friendly to cpu devices okay and they are saying that um, you know recently grok came up with newer architecture for uh, faster inference now with this one bit llm you can have new computation paradigm new kind of architectures coming up so this is quite an exciting paper uh, uh, i have to wait and see if this gets implemented as part of some frameworks to really test it out and see how it performs and other things and maybe newer architectures are coming up uh, in this space right maybe you require newer architectures you may not need gpus in future you might just need integer computations for llms so it opens up a lot of uh, possibilities right and this paper is also quite good because um, there are a lot of questions right if your weights are in integers how is back propagation done uh, you know how does other things work over here so in this paper they have talked about you know how back propagation is run uh, so they use something called as a straight through estimator for approximating the gradient during back propagation how do you do mixed precision training right and uh, about learning rates and other things are explained in detail in this paper so probably you need to go through this paper to fully understand what is this bitnet architecture and then you can much more appreciate what has been done in this particular paper so this was a short video on the microsoft bitnet b1.58 uh, llm model i hope this video is useful to you if you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel i'll be putting the link of this paper in the description of the video as well as the original uh, bitnet architecture paper so you can look at it hope to see you in another video soon